Jeremy, thank you for coming on. Yeah, no problem. It's been it's a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure to meet you. I appreciate it very much. Um, no problem. At all. One thing I want to get into uh, first with you was um, like I know your you know your art is incredible, um, but I want to know what came first. Was it drawing or was it the music that struck you first? Drawing. Drawing. Yeah, I was like five years old. I started drawing, and my parents they instantly bought me you know paper and pencils and. So it was it was drawing, and then then the music kids. My brother Greg listened to like Kiss, and you know like the the seventies bands. Kids, I remember the seventies still. I remember going to school, and you know I still remember all like seventy eight, seventy nine, and so I, I would listen to Kiss. I remember seeing the Kiss Halloween special, uh, Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park, <laughs> and, you know, and seeing them like being all theatrical and you know, spitting blood, and you know that just it got me into music, and then I got to see him in nineteen ninety. They did not make a bomb, but it was cool. It was like a really good, you know. I'm not, I'm not a big arena rock guy, but there's a few bands I'll go see. Yeah, you know. And it was Kiss that that mainly got me into music. It was what did it. Okay, awesome, cool, very cool. So, like, um, in correlation, like, um, obviously, like, you know, I guess we're like punk rock is probably a big uh, part of my life. I would, probably, I guess, I would say to say it was part of your life as well. Oh yeah. Um, when did uh, when did the when did punk hit you? With Moral Crux. Moral Crux are from this area. In fact, Jim the singer just lives right down the road from me. Oh yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the felons and my band Bob Dixie, we opened up shows for Moral Crux all the time. We played with them all the time. So yeah, I'm really good friends with them. And and uh, when I heard Moral Crux and I started hearing stuff like you know equal rights for gays and stuff and women's rights, you know, because I was raised in a Christian home, you know, with the NRA and all that, you know. And this area I'm living in right now is just a total Trump area in Washington State. And you wouldn't think of it, because we always go Democrat, but this area is red. Okay. It's like total, total Trump, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't care who, you, who you're politically, you know, you do what you want to do. You know, because my wife, was, she's former military, and she fought for that right for you to, you know. Be oh, wow. I didn't know. Okay, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, so, so uh yeah, you, you support who you want to support. But the area I live in, I, I live in the place, I'm, there's a church right there, like 10 feet away, and there's a church on the other side of me. Two churches, dude. <laughs> like, right now, and this town is little. It's dinky. It's a small town. Yeah. And then two churches. So you, that tells you where I live. <laughs> but they're good people. I, I like the people. They're really good people. You know? did, did you grow up around that area uh, all your life? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've moved, in, and then I came back. So okay. I went to Arizona and stuff like that, but... I moved to a redder area. I mean, went to the state, to a whole state that was red. Right. That's where Amy was stationed. So. Okay. So with um, playing. Okay, so you mentioned that you had a band stuff. When did um you start playing? When did you pick up an instrument, or what got you to do that? What was your first one? My first one was a guitar, and I think I was in eighth grade. But I couldn't play it. I didn't know how to play it, so I would just pretend to play it. <laughs> you know, I I know a few chords. And then uh, I was a good singer, you know, so I was going to be a singer, but there was no drummers. Right. Well, I just bought me a, myself a drum kit, a cheap drum kit, and played. You know, I just I, I taught myself with ACDC and, like, Judas Priest, you know, just real simple beats, you know, to start off with. And that's how I learned how to play drums. And so then I taught myself how to sing and play drums. So most of the felon stuff, I was the, the main songwriter and main singer in the band. Wow. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of hard when you're the drummer to do in the back. So Amy's like, well, if you play live, just put your drum set like right in the front. <laughs> you know, I kind of like being in the background. I'm kind of shy that way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I, 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 uh, I understand that totally. Um, so, so that's your, is that your band you still have now? The felons? Yeah. That's the one that, cause everybody, I was going to change it, but everybody told me to just keep the name. Cause I have some stuff on band camp. It, that was the, we did that stuff in, um, some of it was in 90, I want to say 97 or 98. And then the other, the one single that I have on there was 2009, I think. Okay. Because nobody ever heard it. And, you know, and then Grim heard it. And he's like, dude, I want to put that out. You know, thanks to Grim Deeds. It wasn't for Grim and Nick Spoon, those guys from Lesser Creatures, Nick Spoon from Lesser Creatures, and Nim Vend and uh, Dave Strong. Those guys have, have got my name out there. And, yeah, I uh, I usually give a shout out to the Dave Strong. He he's the one that um well when I bought uh that's how I first found out about you because the t shirt you did for him for his night his <laughs> nightcrawler shirt. 
Yeah. And he's like, you got, I got it wrong. <laughs> it was supposed to be Ben Nightcrawler and I just put Nightcrawler. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Still a great chair, man. Yeah. And, and I didn't know that he needed it for the for his his cover. And he didn't say anything. And I, I'd done it. And Uh-oh. And he never got back a hold of me, so. Oh, okay. Sorry, you got muted for a second. You said, yeah, uh. It was, it was an incoming phone call. It was my doctor's office. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Do you want to take that? No, no, it wasn't important. They were just calling and telling me I'm sorry that they called my meds in, so. Okay. Um, so when, when you started the felons, um, were you, where were you as an artist at that point? Um, were you, were you making your own art for that, for your own band too, or? Yeah. Yeah, I was. Um, <clears throat> see, by then at 17, I published my first comic book. So and oh. it wasn't good. It was bad. It was horrible. But I did it, you know. So I know how to do comic books. I'm working on one right now. I just don't have the time to, to finish it. You know, I got a character. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you have a character, you said? Yeah, yeah. I have a character um, called Hey Cat. He's like a, a this, this cat that's alive around humans. And, and it's a pretty cool storyline. But... Uh, I just don't have time to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm working on it. I have the comic book paper and everything I'm working on. It. I had to do comic books. I just taught myself how to do it. Wow. You know, back before we had the internet, I, I had to learn <clears throat> just by talking to people. Because Todd McFarlane, he's from our area. He's from Cheney, Washington. And, and that's just you know, a few hundred miles, about 150 miles away. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I had an autograph, you know, Spider-Man number one and everything. I didn't even realize I sold it a long time ago. <laughs> oh, man. Um, that really got me gassed, you know, because McFarland's such a good artist. Right. So, yeah, it's, I did that. And then uh, <clears throat> I did some artwork for my first band, Heater. We were, we were kind of a Nirvana copy band in a way. <laughs> Not really copy, but our singer, Mickey, I've known him since he was 15. He can sing really good. And, it, I mean, I was listening to some of the stuff, and the songs are like seven minutes long. Oh, wow. Like, I never heard stuff like that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... And then my second band was Bob Dixie, who were like, because Heater kicked me out of my own band. I started Heater, they kicked me out. So everybody hated Heater, like Bob Dixie, because we were like the street punk band, like real fast, super fast. The songs were like 30 seconds. And then out of the, out of Bob Dixie came to Felons, because our bass player left, and I got Matt <clears throat> to come in and play bass, and then the Felons were born after, out of that. Okay. So well, Very cool. You're very, you're very uh, DIY for- from the get-go. Did you know how DIY you were when you were doing all this? <laughs> uh, and, yeah, because I, <clears throat> I always had Jim and Justin Warren, the bass player from Moral Cuts. They were always there as like mentors because we shared a practice spot. I let them practice where the felons practice, so we always shared a spot. And, and they, I always had them as mentors to, to talk to, and they're, so they were always there. And, it, you know, you know I, I can't believe how, how lucky I was just in this area I live in. It's so small and have moral crux be here and <laughs> play shows like the Grange and like the, the, the VFW. And, you know, it's just, it was amazing because how popular these guys are. Right. I mentioned them to people and they're like, oh yeah, moral crux. And this is, kind of, I mean, my friends from Japan knows who they are. And it's like, yeah, moral crux. And it just blows my mind how, you know, yeah. how popular they are. It's the world is very small. It's a, it, you come to realize at some points. <laughs> It's the internet. Yeah. Um, were you, for the Falcons, were you touring? Like, did you guys tour a lot or just local? No, we never toured. We just played, I think, uh, we did like a Washington State tour where we played like, I don't know, it was like eight or nine cities. But <clears throat> just because of my arthritis and stuff, it was hard for me to get out. Mm. Because I was di- diagnosed with it way back in 96. And my mom had it really bad. She was crippled, like her fingers were gnarled and stuff. And and uh, I don't take any medication for it. I just, because I, the medication they had me on, man, I was like 400 pounds. Mm. And, I, I, and I, it, I lost my, my will to like draw and play my music. So I just took myself off all the psych meds and, and I told them, just give me some pain medicine. And it's a low dose of pain medicine. I don't even take it that much. Even the pharmacist tells me, you're taking this much pain medicine with your arthritis? I'm like, yeah, I just don't want to do it. You know, just enough to get me by. Right. So, yeah, and I lost all the weight. And uh, that's what got me drawn again because my brother Kurt died in June. And he's like six years older than me. And I thought, I got to leave a mark on the world, you know, right. something to say I was here. So that's why I started drawing again. Because I hadn't drawn in like 20 years. Wow. And, then, and everybody's like, where have you been, dude? It's like just vegetating here in Washington State. Just vegetating. 
Right. Well, that's amazing that you are you back. You you know, pick yourself back up, and now you're back at it. And so, yeah, your art is in, absolutely incredible. How did um, how did you uh get in touch with uh, I'm gonna say his name wrong, but uh, Nimvind. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so last June I started. We were watching YouTube, <clears throat> and the algorithm on there. We were watching some videos, and so they'll just start playing a video if you don't switch it. Yeah. Um, and then Vin's song um, Saturday Night came on. Oh, that's a great one. And me and Amy were like, boy, that's a great song, you know? So we started listening to it more. And so then I started drawing some stuff. And then Howie Wowie, he seen the, my art. And then he hooked me up with them. And then that's where it went from there. Yeah, that's incredible. And he's going to use that for, he uses that for his, uh, his uh, single, the Johnny, the Johnny Cash cover he does? Yeah, it's, it's on there now. Um, every time I go to like Amazon Music, my art pops right up first thing. And it's like, wow, that's pretty cool, yeah, dude. That's got to be a cool feeling. It is, it is, and and he his, he's the one art for his header and on his store, and he wants to use it for his album cover, his new album cover, and he wants me to do some art for his, his European tour that's coming out. So yeah, that's incredible. I hope so, and yeah, because sometimes my art it, it's like it's really picky about stuff. <laughs> sometimes I think you like something and you don't like it at all. You know, so I, you know I really gotta gotta vet and judge it in a certain way. Right, your art is very like um, it reminds me of this a like, classic. Well, I mean, not so much. Maybe similar to like the like the early Misfits art. It, it oh, kind of it, yeah. it kind of reminds me of that in a way. The black and white and all that, and you know, kind of gives me that like bullet EP vibe. It gives me that um, <laughs> like uh, and even like horror business. It has like it's like all that bunched together. What 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 I'm trying to say is what what was like your main inspiration for your art style? Um, well. Mainly because I was my comic book, I couldn't afford color, so okay. I had to do it in black and white. Mm-hmm. So that's just what I started doing black and white. And and one thing I forgot to bring back, and I just started doing it with pencils. I would I would do rubbing. I would like shade things um, for the comic book, so you could see like shading on diff- you know, different areas. So I got to start incorporating that back into my art with the pencils. But I don't use any computers or nothing. I just some guy could tell this one guy said. Well, your art would really get better if you get this program. I'm, I'm thinking about doing it, but I don't know. Like some, some of the new art I see that's done on, done on like the tablet, like the, the Apple tablet and stuff, it just, I don't know, it looks too fakey to me. Yeah. It doesn't look, like, it doesn't look organic. It doesn't look alive. Yeah, I went to a tattoo shop and, like, and they were using all tablets. And, now, and I, was like, really? I was like, whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> it was, wow. It was interesting. But, uh, yeah, they're using tablets to draw everything up and all that instead of uh, on Flash and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever works. I, I like, I like the, I think I like the more natural, like it humanizes the art more, I would say, I guess. I mean, nothing, nothing wrong with tablets or anything, but I, that's very cool. Cause I think you maybe I'm ignorant to art and all that, but when I looked at your art, it looked like it was like, it was so good. It's so good. I, it's, it's hard to believe that it was done by hand. It's amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. I see. I don't think my art's that good. And, <laughs> but I'm a critic, you know, I don't, I I, I just don't, and, you know. <laughs> There's a lot. A lot of artists will say that, right? <laughs> I just barely bought a light table, like a light board. I never had a light board before. I, you know, if I had to redo something, I would just like trace it somehow, or I never used a light board before. So if I did a picture, I had to do it right the first time, and then that was it. You know, I just I didn't. If I screwed it up, I screwed it up. You know, <laughs> it's a little mistake. So I just barely got a light board, so I can redo art if I screw it up. <laughs> You mentioned earlier, but what are, what are some of your what are some of your biggest influences? Well, for art, um, like Tom McFarlane was a big influence. Um, let's see, I like like the like John Romita Jr. He's really good. He did Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Eric Larson that did the Savage Dragon. Jim Lee was is a good artist. Uh, it's, it's a lot of comic book artists because that's really what I wanted to do is be a comic book artist. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't really have any like mask. Like I guess I like. Uh, you know, Picasso was pretty good, but you know, um, his stuff looked kind of weird to me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Yeah, people think that's a cow or a, a bull or something." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was all weird, you know. So yeah, I, I studied that stuff. I studied like masters and stuff, but like Rembrandt. But my grandma wanted me to do it. She got me an oil paint and don't oh, paint me oil. I I didn't. Know. I like to draw stuff quick and draw it and come up, you know, take a few hours. Sometimes I'll take 12 hours on a picture. And, um, 
just sit there all night and draw this picture. Like that one Balzac I did where it looks like the misfit skeleton and he's holding a pumpkin. That one took me about 12 hours. Wow, yeah, that one's incredible. Yeah, that That's... was one of my favorites. Yeah, I do have favorites. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So what, what, what's the longest uh, piece of work that you worked on? Like that took, like you said, 12 hours there. Was that one the longest? Yeah, that's one of the longest. That's that's sometimes I'll spend twelve hours, and that's when I stay up all night and then have to sleep during the day. <laughs> um, you know, I drink coffee or whatever, and just stay up and, and draw. You right. know, but I don't like doing that. I'm a night person. I'm not a morning person. Okay, so that's when you usually, <laughs> that's when you draw the most, probably at nighttime. At night, yeah. I used to be a morning person, so I met Amy, and she was always a night person. She hates getting up in the morning She's like uh, a bear. It's not a- me. I get up at like six o'clock in the morning, start singing and everything. She's like, Why do you do that? <laughs> That. <laughs> that's Roger Whitaker. If you ever heard of Roger Whitaker, oh, he's like it. Yeah, he's from South Africa, and my mom was listening to him, and I read some Jim, sing Jim Reeves or something. She's why are you singing a Ronnie Millsap? <laughs> Get your day going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I seen Ronnie Millsap actually. The, the country star, the blind guy that played piano. I actually got to see him live once. Oh wow! That was cool. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I was, I was glad to do that. That that was a cool opportunity I had to, to see him. Because don't, I don't know if he's still alive or not. I mean, that was back in the early '90s, though. Right. I don't know if he's alive. What well, What was one of the first punk shows you ever went to? Moral Crux was the very Moral first Crux? punk show. <clears throat> yeah, because I remember I showed up with my Bullet Boys jacket on and long hair, and you know I had a mullet, and and Justin, the bass player, I'd stand by Justin like headbang. You know, I, I, was, I was watching that headbanger shit video from Teenage Bottle Rocket and I was like God that was me like in <laughs> 1988 man that's me right there because I went to school there's an alternative high school here and so I was going to school with Justin and he was like oh I because I'm, I'm the youngest of nine so wow. I have five boys he's like I didn't know there was a young the younger Henderson and so I was like yeah that's me and so we became best friends me and Justin were best friends for, I mean we did oh man all kinds of stuff together that's, inc- that's incredible yeah did um yeah, it was more cracks. I remember Soundgarden. Soundgarden was supposed to be at that show, but their their bus broke down. Their van broke down from Spokane. Wow. Was like, I think personally that it didn't break down, that they just wanted to get back to Seattle because it's a long drive, you know, and they just didn't want to stop by Podunk, you know, Moses Lake and, yeah. <laughs> and play a show. So, yeah, 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 our van's was- broken down to keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to play with the, um, the, uh, the crumbs. In Spokane, and they didn't show up because I guess their van broke down. So, mm. and there's a lot of people there for that show, and, and they didn't show up. So, oh, I'm, glad wow. we, yeah, I'm glad we pulled it off because you know they would have been mad. You know, we had to play our set list twice on that one. I was gonna say, <laughs> find a longer set then, right? Yeah, yeah, why <laughs> you want to take a break and do it all over again? Wow, <laughs> that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I know we do Washington, a lot. You mentioned Soundgarden. Was there any more like the grunge scene around you at that time, too, or is it more just like a metal? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, I remember Nirvana. Nirvana opened up for Moral Crux over in Seattle. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, the, who was the drummer? It wasn't Dave Grohl. It was... Uh, Chad Channing? The the, no, it was the dude from the Melbourne. Oh, Dale Krover. Yeah, and he was telling the guy that's putting on the show, he's like, I'm Dale Krover. I'm from the Melbournes. We should be going on last. I'm from the Melbourne. And he's like, <laughs> I don't care. Moral Crux are popular than Nirvana. <laughs> Nirvana. Nirvana opened. It was funny, dude. Yeah. That's yeah, so, yeah, I guess I guess I seen the the grunge thing, and <clears throat> it was fun playing that. You know, it's yeah. You know, Dave Grohl was a big influence on me. You know, listening to him play drums was like, man, it was incredible. I, I tried to to emulate him, but mainly it was it was uh, Jody uh, Kimmel from Moral Product. Everybody say, oh, you sound like Jody, but I don't think I do. He played double bass. I remember I bought his double bass pedal that he used to record his uh, the first two albums that Moral Product did, and I. I sold it. I just should have kept it. Oh, you know? man. Yeah, I learned how to play double bass, but I play single bass now. I just, I've always just stuck to single bass. Mm-hmm. If you can get a faster beat, that's cool. If you can get a faster beat on that. Right. That kick, yeah. Do you, um, so, with the, you know, with the Fallons, but I meant you were, when you were talking earlier, you mentioned uh, you have demos and recording and stuff. Is that just something different or is that for Fallons? Yeah, that's for the Fallons. Um, um, because, uh, I'm working. We never re- did an album, like a, a full album. I never, I did a full album with Heater and I did a full album with uh, Bob Dixie, but the Felons never did. We did two EPs. And so that's what I'm doing right now is I want to do another Felons album. Uh, and it's just me playing my bass and, and singing. But that's how I write all my stuff on bass. Okay. But I, I play, I, I make up the guitar parts too on my bass, so I'll show the guitar player because this is what you're supposed to play. <laughs> 
That's, you know, that's perfect. They, they never want to, though. I, I want to get Cosmo back, the guitar player, the original guitar player from the Felons, because he had like a metal um, feel to his guitar. He, and, like, because he liked Bad Brains, but Chromags, and he liked Judas Priest and Van Halen. So he had like a metal kind of feel to his guitar playing, and I really want to get him back and see if he'll do it, but he probably won't. <laughs> He lives in Spokane, so <laughs> we were. I just about had him convinced. He's like, "Yeah, well, I'll get my son to play bass and come up here and we'll practice." And then he reneged on it. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> the sounds almost got back together. Like almost two original guys. Because the bass player Matt, he's got a, a trimmer, so he and he don't like me anyway. We fight. <laughs> and he, he he's the um, uh, the main the executive producer at NBC News in Tri City. So oh wow. Yeah, yeah, we we fight, but he was the only guy in the band that was a felon. That was a real felon. He was your own lead. He got busted. So <laughs> he's like, "Dude, you're the you're the you're the actual felon." That's the guy came back. <laughs> yeah, he he was the only felon. Chris Cosmo was, and I I never broke the law. You know, never had anything. You know, bad. I had a, D, a DUI once. That was it. You mm-hmm. know, it was a medication they put me on, so I got off that. Oh wow, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, with uh. You know, with um, all these, uh, is there any other bands that you're working with for your art as well, other than uh, Nivend? Yeah, um, like Noodle Brain. Uh, he's out of Chicago, I believe. Um, let's see, I, I do some stuff for Manus Watch. Uh, the Brents, they're from Idaho. I don't know if they're if they're a band now, but but Brent, the the main singer and songwriter, he's got another band called the uh, the Goodyear Wimps, and I'm working on stuff for them. But they just released an album, the Brents did, on a laptop that has my artwork on it. Um, a laptop hug? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great label. It's, it's really growing, man. Yeah, it really is. They have an amazing roster. Yeah, because that, that that new uh, comp that they just put out, that's the, the first time the felons have been on a comp. I've never, we've never been on a comp. Oh, no kidding. I had to listen yeah. to it. I didn't even know about it. It just came out? Yeah, yeah laptop punk uh, number two is the second one. Oh, so, second release. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So it's it's out. It's it's just a single that's on Bandcamp. Yeah, yeah. But I have a couple, I have a few more songs that I didn't put out on Bandcamp off our EPs. I got one that I'm I'm waiting to put out uh, called the Unknown Racer, which is um, you ever heard of the uh, the the Ricketts? No, I have not. Oh yeah, they're a band from Seattle. Um, Larry Rickett, uh, he had a band called Larry and the Gonan Wears. We that little tour of Washington State I told you about. We did it with him with Larry and the Gonan Wears. Okay, and he just loved that song, dude. He loved the Unknown Racer because it's really fast. It's to the point. It's like a minute and thirty seconds. <laughs> you know, it's like it's, he did a review for our out for our EP, and he's like, yeah, "This is the best song they do." And <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I want to get, get that one put out eventually. Yeah, well, I can't wait to hear that. That'd be cool. Did um. Do you like? Uh, do you plan to? So you plan to do like an album with these demos, or, um, or just an EP? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm planning on doing is an album. I got. Uh, I'm just. I'm looking into like, doing like buying the equipment for my house, just record here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I might do a few songs, like maybe a small EP first at a studio, which I know a few guys that own studios. There's one guy that I knew. He passed away, and it really sucks because he just lived right down the road, and he had a real nice studio. And, and uh, it's not. He's his wife still lives there, but I mean, uh, the studio equipment's probably still there. But I don't think she'd let me record there. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, he, he was a cool guy. I liked Alan. He was a cool guy. So oh, man. yeah, and I'm and, and thinking about booking some studio time because I have the money to do it. I just don't. You know, find the time. Say, yeah, and the time. Well, I got the time because Amy, she's she's disabled out of the military too. So we we don't work. We don't have to work. So right. Yeah. So she. Uh, um, she fractured her hip in basic training. Oh no! And yeah, but she's tried to stay in, you know, as long as she could. And she finally got a hundred percent disability because they were like trying to give her ten percent. We were like living on four hundred dollars a month one, at once, and our rent was four four hundred and thirty-five, and our rent was four hundred. Wow, jeez. Yeah, because yeah, I was waiting for my so my social security to go through, and and I went the judge. I went to him and. He was like, you got a year of college, and he had the wrong guy's paperwork. He didn't even have my paperwork. He's like, I don't have a year of college. I don't have a high school diploma. I don't have a year of college. No schooling. You know, so I had to wait another four years. Wow. But when I got, but when I did get it, they gave it to me like instantly because of my arthritis and stuff. They knew, you know, like they had made a mistake. Hey, everything's all good then now. Yeah, it's it's all good. Good. Um, for your art, I was sorry, I would try to track it back, but, um, how, no, how, fine, yeah. Yeah, how do you get, um, commissions? Do you, is it just word of mouth? I don't, cause you don't have a website, do you? 
No, no, I need to start one though, because I just barely started doing this last year around June. Right. Um, <clears throat> no, just word of mouth. Sometimes I'll like, uh, I'll send a message to a band that I hear that I like. I'll okay. say, hey, I can, and I just do it for free. I don't, I don't charge anything. Wow. You know, if they want to give me something, you know, that's fine. But I just, you know, I usually don't, I don't pay for it. Like Dave, you know, I, I paid for my shirts when he when he made them because you know he's got a family and stuff, and I don't want to take money from his family, you know. So I just, I'd rather just buy them, you know, than buy them, you know, because it has my art on it, so I want it, you know. Hey, right, yours. I might, I might have to ask you to do something for me soon. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, the time. yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm working on something for you right now, actually. So. Oh, you are. Yeah, I was hoping to get it finished by today, but I didn't. Get oh it. wow, wow. <laughs> okay. So, wow, thank you. I'm, I'm doing this series of uh, pictures called the Mesmerizing Skull, and that that skull that did on Dave's shirt, that was the first one. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I did. Yeah, I did one for Lesser Creatures. Uh, um, I did one for the the. Keep pops in Germany. Um, I did one for uh, the antibody. Um, so I, I was doing one for you for the tread guard. Oh wow! And I wrote a song too. I have a demo of the of the song. I did a song for the Med Brian's Skull, and it's really good. Yeah, I was, was going to say you mentioned it for the with the with the, the swirly skull. Is that um, is that going to be one of your de- one of your demos? Yeah, it is. Okay, it's, it's one. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, that's one of Carl heard. He really liked that one. I did one called. Uh, um, all the new, all new punk bands sound like the queers, but it sounds like a queer song. So I was going to record it. So the dude that's bitching about this, his his song sounds like a queer song. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wrote it in the same style, and I can pull off a, a Joe Queer voice. So I was going to do it in the studio, dude. Dude, <laughs> sound like Joe Queer, you know. Have you ever seen them play? I'm sure. No, I haven't. Oh actually. no. I, I, there was a few times that I was just supposed to go see him in uh, October to see the Dickies because Adam Gomez, the drummer. Um, I talked to him and from the Dick, from the Dickies, and they were opening for the Dickies. So, but I didn't get to go because uh, our car didn't have tabs on it, and I didn't really have tabs. And I told Amy, like, you didn't have tabs, and so we had to cancel the trip. It's like 250 miles to go see a show if we want to go see one. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, it must be. We left like 250 to Seattle. No, 200, yeah, 250 to Seattle or 150 to Spokane. Hmm. So, I mean, with, with more trucks and the felons not playing in Moses Lake, there's really not. There's blues bands and stuff, but not much of a no scene. Problem. No, yeah, it's kind not of at all. it's kind of like where I'm at too. I, you have to drive out to if you go to any shows. Yeah, but, yeah. The, and, and being older and disabled, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to get around and, and go. And, and, and our cats, we have to leave our cats here by themselves, and they flip out. <laughs> I got one too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay because we don't have any kids. We've been married. We're gonna be married 26 years in August. And we don't have any kids. Oh. Nothing, so. Hey, uh, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, no, actually, it's, it's we spend, I mean, we're together 24 7, and it's like people are like, you guys don't get it, show the throats. It's like, no, we're best friends. We hang out all the time. It's just what we do. That's, we that's awesome. Out. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. I, I think I'm really the coolest chick around here, too, because everybody liked Amy because she always did the guy shit. You know, she, she never wore makeup or nothing, and she liked to skateboard and everything. So I think I, I, I can land the, the cream of the crop in one here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was gonna say, uh, do you have anything planned? Uh, you, know, you say you have the comic book you got, you're trying to get done. Is there anything else you're working on? Um, well, I'm working on that one for you. I'm I'm working on the Vin stuff right now for his European tour. Uh, and then and then I got an infection in my foot last week, and I've been uh. running a fever. And I still have it too. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That. No, well, the fever went away, but it's just I don't know how I got it either. Hmm. You know. Um, so yeah, I'm working on that and, uh, not really anything. Um, Graham surprised me and used a picture I did for a single that he put out a few, like last month. Who was that? And that yeah. Grim, Grim Deeds used to, okay. a, a picture I did for a single and I didn't even know he was going to use it. But every time I draw a picture for a band or something, you know, it's always their artwork. They want to use it for anything. It's theirs, you know, I just use it, you know, I'll mail it to you. If I can afford to mail it to you, I'll, I'll do it as fast as I can. That's awesome. So that's what I do. I just like doing it for free. So I like to help out the scene as much as I, you know. Oh, yeah, I am working on uh, Nick Spoon's son. Uh, he got his first band. They're called the Sons of Zeus. I'm working on a logo and stuff for them. Oh, cool. I'll just check so, them yeah. out. Yeah. I don't know if they have any music out or not, but he's like, yeah, it's his first band. And I don't know how old he is. You know, I think he's young. I think he's, I don't think he's a teenager. He might be a teenager, but he's really into Green Day and, and, uh, 
I was going to send him the, I have Slappy, an original Slappy on 7, and it's never been listened to. It still, like, looks brand new. Oh, I was going to send it to him. He's like, no, don't send it to him. He wouldn't understand you know, the importance of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great <laughs> record. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I have that one. I have uh, Two Hectic from Off Ivy. They've never been listened to. There's sevens that never been listened to. And I just always have had them. <laughs> yeah, I got a DOA uh, from Joey Shithead just from his basement. It never oh. opened. War Room 45, I never opened it. That's a good album. Yeah, yeah we, we we got to open up for for DOA in Spokane. Mm-hmm. That was fun. That was really. We got to hang out with Joey Shithead for like, because he was outside like kicking a soccer ball around. And we were in our <laughs> and the, the the bus that we used that said church bus on it. It was more Crutch's old bus, and so he he like he, he didn't know what it was about. So he comes in and you guys are a religious organization. <laughs> no, <laughs> and then Amy she tells him she tells Joey Shithead she said, I was raised Mormon. He's like I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> 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 that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Joey's fucking. He gave me a shirt that said "Fuck God, fuck Satan." We're atheists. I never <laughs> worn it around here. Yeah, I know, yeah. right? That gets some. That gets some yeah. stares. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, or shot might get shot. Yeah. You know. Right. <laughs> all right, man. Well, um, that's all. I, that's all I have uh, to okay. go over. Um, honestly, it was a great pleasure to meet you and talk with you. You're an awesome dude. Uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. It's inc- it's very awesome. Hopefully, you get a website up and you know. Yeah, I do. Spread just, the word on you. Yeah, I should. Yeah, I should. I just. Um, I think if I do that, I'm gonna get so much more, you know, orders and stuff. Uh, and I, I kind of wanted to keep my, you know, my artwork just a few bands and a few artists and. I guess so. you. But yeah, I'll get that trade yard done for you. Oh man, that's yeah. I I gotta ask you about that. Then uh, that's that's really awesome of you. Um. Yeah, I'll post it and then tag you so then you know it's done. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Well, it was a pleasure to uh, talk with you. Okay. And uh, well, yeah, we'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, bye. Go!